Let's be honest, we're all interested in the wealthy. But what do you think of when you think of a millionaire? Fast cars? Expensive suits and clothes? Huge mansions in the hills? Think again. Very few millionaires will ever spend a lot of money on luxury items and supercars. They usually live in modest neighborhoods where the cost of living and social pressures of consumerism are lower. This book essentially splits everyone into two categories, underaccumulators of wealth, UAWs, and prodigious accumulators of wealth, PAWs. UAWs have a low net worth relative to income, and the opposite is true for PAWs. PAWs grow wealthy by living well below their means. These are people who do not fit into the stereotype of millionaires. They live in modest neighborhoods, drive practical sedans, and have blue collar jobs, as opposed to the expensive lifestyle associated with the idea of a millionaire. On the other end, UAWs are typically well educated professionals with high paying and high profile jobs, such as doctors, attorneys, etc., who feel the societal pressure to keep up with and reflect their social standing. These people will typically squander their money driving luxury cars and living in luxury neighborhoods. It is this lifestyle which causes them to have a low net worth because they spend most of their income. So how do the rich get rich? What's their secret and what do they do with their money? We all want to know how we can achieve even just a tiny sliver of their wealth. The Millionaire Next Door shows you the simple spending and saving habits that lead to more cash in the bank than most people will earn in their lifetimes. This book is essential to help you avoid critical mistakes on your way to financial independence. So, as it turns out, becoming a millionaire isn't the hardest thing in the world. It simply requires planning well, living below your means, and avoiding a few stupid mistakes. So how do we do this? If you're truly committed to unlocking financial freedom, start by using these three rules to improve your chances of ending up with a million dollars in the bank. Rule number one, start saving as much as you possibly can from the moment you first start earning more than you need to live. Most people think that the only way to become a millionaire is to earn at least a million a year. But even if you're one of the top earners in the world, taxes will eat away roughly 50% of your income annually. Then after you deduct living expenses, the cost of rent or a mortgage, and a few vacations, you might end up with just 200,000 if that. But if you truly want to be a millionaire, you never even have to earn near that much. Not with this rule anyways. The moment you earn more than you need to live, save as much as you responsibly can and avoid spending money on non-necessities. Having a good budget and living a frugal life is really all you need to build wealth, especially if you start young. Around 55% of all millionaires credit their wealth to simply being deliberate about their finances and having discipline when it comes to saving. Rule number two, determine if you're achieving your full financial potential. You can calculate if you're not reaching your full financial potential with this simple equation. Multiply your age with your pre-tax annual income and divide that by 10. Whatever this number is reflects how rich you could be right now if you've already cultivated good spending habits. For example, if you earn $50,000 at age 30, your expected wealth comes out to $150,000. Now take this with a grain of salt since you know, it takes younger people longer to reach their expected wealth because of compounding interest. So for all the youngsters out there, don't feel bad because a six-year-old will have reaped the benefits of interest they get on their interest for much longer. But this is a decent indicator of how well you stack up and can keep you from becoming caught up in keeping up with the Joneses. There are so many people who appear wealthy, but in reality spend all their money on keeping up with this illusion. They buy things they don't need with money they don't have to impress people they don't like. Try to get closer and closer to your expected wealth over time, not by saving excessively to the point that you can't enjoy life, but by avoiding spending money too much in the first place. Rule number three, avoid financial dependence on other people. This is what we call economic outpatient care. You know how rich kids typically can't handle their own finances and never have to worry about spending money excessively? That's what economic outpatient care, or EOC, is all about. As much as affluent parents mean well when they support their children with their own hard-earned money, the reality is it hurts their ability to handle money. Almost half of all wealthy Americans sponsor their children and grandchildren with over 15000 a year, which leads to them having luxurious lifestyles which they technically can't afford. 
Growing up, I was never really crazy with money, but I know for a fact that I still didn't know how to save and grow my money until I started earning it on my own. Because that's when you truly see the value of a hard-earned dollar. The problem with regular EOC is that it eventually just blends in with your annual income, making you believe that you earn more than you do. The lesson to be learned here? If you have rich parents, don't waste their money. At least invest it wisely. And if you are a rich parent, don't spoil your kids. You really are doing them a disservice in the long run. At the end of the day, the lessons learned in this book are essential for everyone, from the 22-year-old who's about to take his first job after graduating from college, to the 35-year-old who settled well into her career but wants to do better. And even for the 19-year-old with wealthy parents who's never had to work a day in their life. Most people really could save half of their income or more if they just didn't buy as many useless things as they do. This book is about how to make that happen. The most important message to take away from this is just about anyone can become a millionaire if you live below your means and invest well. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter how much you make. What matters most is how much you save. If you make $100,000 a year, but you spend $125,000 a year, you will never build wealth. But if you make $60,000 a year and you live on $30,000 investing the rest, over time, you'll be in great shape. If you want to be wealthy, do what wealthy people really do. Have a budget, invest, and most importantly, prioritize living below your means and financial security over social standing. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you liked the video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Make it a prosperous day.